That's a big one. That's a showstopper right there. Look at that big old tub of lard. Hey guys, welcome back to Project E. Man, I just got off the water. I say got off the water, I got blown off the water. Man, it howled today, like 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. Really, really rough. But I uh, still had a great episode, caught a lot of good fish. And, and I'm, I'm talking about overlooked, underutilized areas to catch spawning bass, and in my opinion, the biggest bass in your lake. I, I, I think people overlook this. I, I, I know in my career, I overlooked it. I know in my career, it's one of those places that I've had a ton of success fishing tournaments, fishing this kind of structure, this time of year when fish are spawning. So you guys want to stick around to the end because when I get off the water, I am going to show you exactly right here on Google Earth, you know, where I caught them today. And then I'm going to show you three, four other lakes, man, like super good spots that I've caught them in the past. You're going to want to stick around to the end, see this stuff on Google Earth that I'm going to show you. When fishing offshore, these offshore spots, you know, for spawning fish, it's so important not to get in a hurry. You, you got to realize that, you know, I'm trying to keep that bait in that little home range, that spawning area of that bass for as long as possible. You know, I, a mistake I make a lot of times is I just want to hurry, make another cast, make another cast. You know, there's days that you've got to just crawl that bait, you know, really, really slow on the bottom to keep it in that strike zone that much longer, and that's what it takes to get a bite. Oh, there's one. I don't know what I got. Oh, that's a decent one. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Not a giant, but it's a fish. Barely got him hooked. Thanks, buddy. When I'm fishing these offshore, you know, these, these hidden little humps or, or points, you know, trying to catch these spawning fish, and I've got wind to contend with, I try to keep my bait in line with the wind, you know. I've got my boat pointed into the wind right here, but yet I'm casting back. That way my line is straight. I've got direct contact with it the whole time. If I tried to cast 90 degrees, then I'm gonna have a bow, and I'm, I'm gonna miss a lot of fish. I'm not gonna feel a lot of fish. You know, that's why I'm fishing directly behind the boat because I have direct contact. I have the most amount of feel right when that bite happens. This is the time of the year when I want to keep my bait on the bottom. I'm, I'm really going to drag it to the side. I'm not going to do a lot of lifting and dropping, lifting and dropping. I want to keep it on the bottom, disturbing the bottom, you know, disturbing that bed where those fish would be spawning. So it's really important to drag it to the side. Don't get in a big hurry, keep it on the bottom, dragging the bottom, trying to like make little dust particles on the bottom or disturbing the bottoms the way I think about it. There's a fish. Oh, he's a wild one. He is a wild one. Come here, buddy. Hey, hold still, hold still, hold still, hold still. All right, prime example of it's hard on the top of that. You know, the water's down right here, but this is the kind of stuff that I'm trying to fish underneath the water. I just wanted to show you what it would look like. You know, it's gravel. It's just a perfect spot for fish to spawn because it's harder on those underwater points, those humps. The top of those things are harder. And I've seen even in Google Earth photos, you know, when the water's down, you can see the old beds on top of certain spots like that. But I just want to show you an example of you know, the wind and the years of, of, of currents keep the top of those underwater humps and points harder, and that's why it makes it a good spot for those fish to spawn. One thing that really boosts my confidence in the spring, you know, fishing offshore like this is, you know, there's, in the spring it's just a given. There's lots of boats on the water. You're always following somebody. You know, and if, if I was fishing in a pocket following a boat, 
you have visual targets that everybody that goes in that pocket hits. You know, out here on these offshore spawning fish, there is no visual target. I don't mind following a boat. It's just a random cast, you know. It's, I could cast two foot to the right or two foot to the left and, and who knows where I may land. So I, it gives me a lot more confidence following somebody or if I have to fish behind other boats, being offshore because there's not a specific cast or target to hit. There's a good one. Golly, that's a full grown fish right there. That is a full grown fish. I don't know what I got, but I got something full grown. Yes, 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 yes. It's one thing I love when I'm fishing this offshore stuff like this. Man, you just don't ever know what you're gonna catch. And I feel like some of the biggest fish in the lake, you know, they don't ever go to the pockets or the bank to spawn. They spawn out on offshore structure. Not a giant, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Come here, please. Oh, yes, I got you now. All right. All right, all right. Long. You can see that fish has got a belly. Just starting to get a few marks on its tail. Pretty fish. Pretty fish. All right. Sweet. One thing I, I, I noticed on that fish catch, you know, I'd been here just a little bit. I caught a little one here, but I changed up my angle. I came across that, that it's got a little flat on this side of that point, and I, I brought my bait this way. So it just always make it a point to, to make multiple casts, multiple angles, you know, like this on offshore stuff. I think it's important not to overpower the fish with too big a line. You know, you're making long casts, you know, I'm wanting to keep that bait on the bottom. I'm wanting to keep it slow. Um, that's much easier to do with lighter lines, say 14 pound test over 20 pound test. You know, 20 pound test has that much more resistance in the water. I just feel like it's harder to keep that bait on the bottom and to keep it really slow with bigger lines. So I like lighter line, you know, there's really not a lot of cover out here. You know, once you get one hooked, there's not a lot of stuff out here that he can break you off. Hey, there's a bite. Oh, man, I had to switch over to Carolina rig. Just that wind is howling so bad. You know, my little stand-up head, I couldn't work it slow enough, you know, to catch some of these fish that are up here. So with that Carolina rig, I'm able to work it just a little bit slower. There we go. You can see he's got a red tail right there. He's up here spawning out here on this offshore stuff. Just getting up here too. Thank you, buddy. Awesome. All right, so you know, great thing about offshore humps, main lake points, underwater points, is that it'll extend the, the, the spawn. You know, these fish out here, when I say extend the spawn, my season for fishing spawning fish, you know, up in the creeks, way up in the pockets, the rivers, that warms a month, two months quicker than the main lake stuff like this. You know, it's a big body of water, a big mass of water that takes a lot longer to warm up versus way up in the back of a creek or a pocket. Those areas warm up faster. These are gonna be later, thus you can catch these fish later in the year. There's a bite. And he's pulling hard for no bigger than he is. Change over that Carolina rig and I got a couple bites really, really quick. I'm just able to move it that much slower. Any minute here, I'm gonna catch one of them. All right. Nothing wrong with that fish. Thanks, buddy. All right. Awesome, awesome. I'm gonna try to stand up and make that same exact cast. You know, so many times, when they're spawning like that, if you can throw right back in there, you know, that might be the male. I might turn around and get lucky and catch the female. You never know, you know, out here in this open water, it's really hard to make that same exact cast. But I'm gonna throw in the general direction and pretend that I did, so. 
can really tell when you get in a good little stretch, you know, that, that weight's just knocking, just ding, ding, ding. You know, it's really hard bottom, and a lot of times that's when a bite will come. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. He's a jumper. Just threw my critter hog off, you little turkey. Who says you can't catch them in 30 mile an hour winds? <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without that trolling motor though. Good night. That's a game changer right there. Just being able to put that thing on anchor mode and sit right here, put me a new bait on. Dragging that bait through there, you know, those last two bites, you can just feel a spot that's rockier than anything else. It's just rougher. That, that weight's just going dunk, 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 as it's moving you know, hitting those rocks. And right when I started getting in those rocks, both times is when I got that bite. Golly, it's hard to feel those bites in the wind. <laughs> it is starting to blow. You know, the thing about it is, that's a little one that could be a male up there. You know, I could turn right back around and catch a giant. It's a way to catch a giant. I lost a giant earlier this morning. I would give anything to show you guys. <laughs> I thought I was tied to like the bottom of the lake when I set the hook, and then it just, the rod throbbed on me. You know, with the conditions I got today, I, I, I put the butt seat up here. You know, it's just so rough. The wind's blowing so hard that, you know, I can just use it to balance myself. I don't necessarily use it to sit on, I just, you'll see my leg up against it all the time. It's just a balancing tool for me. You know, if I'm sitting there on the trolling motor one-legged, I can lean on that just enough to keep my balance, keep me from falling out. Uh, just keeps you from getting so fatigued at the end of the day also. Oh, golly, he was at the very end of the cast. Holy smokes, it couldn't be any further back there like that Carolina rig hit the bottom and he hit it. Not very big, I don't think. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of line. <laughs> Get in here, buddy. Golly, I just think I've been going too fast. Come on, fish, get up here. <laughs> it's a chunky one. Fat fish just moving up here. And that fish is cold. All right. That's a prime example of the stuff that I'm trying to fish. You know, that's just a high spot that's hard on top, got gravel. You know, if, if we had two to four feet of water over the top of that, that would be perfect in this lake. Now, maybe your lake, you know, if it was at Table Rock and we had 12 to 15 feet of water over, you know, a high spot like that, it would be perfect. Or at Grand, you know, maybe that high spot like that, you know, I'd want it in, say, five to seven feet of water on the lower end of the lake. And, and you know, three to six feet of water on the midsection of the lake. Oh, that feels like a decent one. That feels like a decent one. Oh yeah. Yes siree. Man, that's the thing about it. You know, I, I love on this stuff, fishing out here. I feel like I can catch a giant at any moment. Just because it's it's kind of like, you know, it's just hidden. I don't know, it's not one particular cast. Golly, fish, come back. Holy smokes. Yes. That's a big one. That's a showstopper right there. Look at that big old tub of lard. Oh man, looky there. Woo-hoo! Full of eggs. How about that fish? 
Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, girl. Thank you, thank you. I'll put you right back. So one thing to think about, you know, watching this, or if I was watching this, you know, it looks like I'm out here in really, really deep water. I'm not. You know, I am trying to focus on two to four feet of water because that's the depth with this water clarity that these fish can spawn. So on your body of water, the cleaner the water, the deeper they can spawn. I always kind of think about how far down in the water I can see and then times at times two. So like if I can see my bait a foot and a half, two foot down, they'll spawn three to four feet, you know, just out of sight, you know, generally. So the two to four is where they're gonna spawn in this water clarity. Say if we're on Table Rock and I can see 10 feet down, those fish are gonna spawn 10 to 20. I mean, they're gonna spawn deep or, or uh, out on these flats like this. So that's where you wanna start, you know, when you, when you talk about like looking for offshore humps and these hidden points, focus on the depth that the water clarity dictates those fish are gonna be spawning. All right, guys, let's uh, let's break down what we did. Let's do the power stop breakdown of my gear. Um, I'm pretty particular about my Carolina rig rod. Um, this is a 7.6 medium heavy moderate. That moderate is really key. It's just got a lot of a lot of stiffness to it. It's kind of a parabolic bend. Got it on an 8 3 to 1 gear ratio reel. Really critical to have it on a faster gear ratio reel to, to wind that slack up. Uh, I've got 17 pound main line right there and I've just got 17 pound leader. I didn't change that up a lot. Uh, that's probably a three quarter ounce weight, little clacker and a swivel, something really pretty simple. Now for you, if you're gonna do this on, let's say Grand or Table Rock or uh, any other lake that's really clear, you're gonna drop down in line size. You're gonna wanna go with 14 pound main line and maybe a 10 or 12 pound leader. So the, the cleaner the water, the deeper you're fishing, the lighter the line you wanna fish. It'll all work on that same rod, uh, just drop down in line size. The other rod I used and caught some fish on uh, was this rod right here. It's a 7.3 heavy action carbon light. Same reel, 8.3 to 1 gear ratio reel, 14 pound line. I had on this, I had just a, uh, it's called a fatty bottom hopper, it's the, the fat, uh, bottom hopper worm that they got. It's a green pumpkin uh, magic color. Uh, just got that on a profound head, just a lightweight head, just you know, just a, a power shaky head type deal like that right there. That's what I was had that on and uh, I, I, I rigged that, that a bunch and then I started rigging a, a little critter hog there towards the end just to show them something a little bit different. But uh, you'll notice I got a, a cushion on the end of my rod. I really like that. Just it's super soft. You go to set the hook, it also floats your rod if you ever kick one over. But uh, that's my setup, you know, the line, the rod, the reel, I think those things are important. Uh, not to have too big a line, especially that kind of wind, and to keep that bait down and to be able to work it slower. Try to go with the lightest line that you possibly can get away with. And uh, yeah, that's it guys. Let's go back to the house. I want to show you on the Google Earth, on the map, exactly what I'm talking about. Because I just want to make sure you understand that you're trying to catch spawning fish, but they're main lake, they're, they're out offshore, they're not in a pocket, they're not in a cove, you know, protected body, you know, protected area. Uh, it's kind of getting outside the box. It's a, it's a way to extend the spawn. It's a way to catch a giant. It's a way to uh, get away from the crowd. So let's go back to the house. I'm gonna go get the truck and uh, show you guys what we did. All right, guys, we made it back to the house. Just pulled up Google Earth here. I, I wanted to show you what, you know, what I fished, and I want to show you a few other lakes to look at, um, just what to look for when we're talking about this. You know, here on this lake, on Falcon Lake, there's really not a good photo. I've been back through them all that shows the water level like it is right now. You know, it's like 40 feet low, but, you know, if I, if I was to zoom out, all those fish came. This is the tigers. Um, all those fish came basically right here 
in the mouth of the tiger. You know, when you come in on the left, there's just a, a lot of flat points. And I was basically sitting right out here, uh, caught some of those fish, caught some of those fish right up here. The, the only really decent photo I could show you, that right there is a 2002 photo. So you can see that underwater hump right there. Um, that's where some of those fish came. And then probably that piece right there is where some of those other fish came. This looks really good. You know, each of these little corners, um, you can tell looking at Google Earth here, you know, you can tell these shinier spots, that's harder bottom. You know, that's hard bottom. This has all been er eroded. Then it couldn't erode there because it's, it's, it's hard. Same thing here. That's what those fish are gonna spawn on. You know, and what I like about this is it extends the spawn. When you're out there, this is main lake as main lake can get. These fish may spawn a month later, uh, maybe even two months later. I know, like if, let's just go look at Rayburn. Let's go to look at another lake. You know, my experience at Rayburn, um, man, I've caught fish, I feel like, that are spawning out on that offshore stuff in eight to 10 feet of water at the first of May. I had a May 10th, 11th event, like a, back in the Everstart days. Uh, that's how that event was won was out offshore on, on still really spawning fish. I think Todd Faircloth might've won it. He did really, really well on it. So when we zoom in on Rayburn here, you know, this is like one of the most famous areas on the whole lake, uh, you know, the Black Forest. And we start kind of going back in, in time and trying to find a photo with the water lower. So, I mean, any of this stuff out here, these, you know, this is just what I'm talking about. This stuff here, you know, it, Rayburn, you know, seven to 10 feet of water, those fish could spawn right here on top of all these ridges. Anything like that, you know, that would just be super, super key to me. Uh, same thing over here, you know, like at the mouth of Indy and the mouth of Harvey. There's lots of fish that spawn out on that stuff. And that's where I want you to think outside the box, extend extend your fishing, extend that really good fishing, extend the opportunity to catch a giant bass because this is where I feel like some of those giants truly live. Let's go to another lake that's a little bit different. Let's go to uh, one that's not so flat, you know, Rayburn, Falcon, both really, really flat. Let's go uh, maybe 10 killer. I think 10 killer's got some good photos and that's gonna be a lot like Table Rock, you know, where 10 killer was low and I could show you some stuff. To me, I mean, and like this pattern, like that offshore fishing, it's really, really good, like on smallmouth fisheries, on spotted bass fisheries. You know, I had a great, great uh, Bassmaster open years ago on Table Rock, and it was those big spots back when Table Rock had really big spots, they were spawning on main lake pea gravel banks, you know, and I just would find a, a rounded point or, or something that was a little bit different, a little bit harder bottom, close to deep water, and those big spots, same thing with smallmouth. I haven't found a super great photo here of 10 killer, but when you look down this bank, you've got you know a lot of, lot of different mud, 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 and then bam, you zoom in right there, you've got a hard little rocky spot. Them smallmouth are gonna spawn on that thing like crazy. That little rock pile right there, that's just, that's what I want you to think about. Outside the box, something a little bit different. And you can find this stuff, it doesn't have to be just on Google Earth, you know. This will show up, this contour line will show up on your Lowrance, you know, on that new mapping that they got. Uh, even if it's Navionics, it'll show up on that stuff. So just think about that. Think about, you know, man, everybody else is running to the backs of those pockets. Maybe I could look out a little bit in front of them you know, look at look a little bit later, you know, a week or two later. Uh, and generally speaking, that's where those biggest fish spawn. They don't go all the way to the back in a lot of these lakes. So let me just show you one more lake. I'm gonna show you, and let's go to Texoma. I used to do this all the time on Texoma. I am getting close. That looks like the Red River to me. Let's zoom in on Old Lake Texoma. What am I going to give up right here? I don't know yet what I want to give up. You know, so generally speaking, you know, lots of people have the conception that bass spawn in the backs of pockets. Here's a prime spot on Lake Texoma. Just to zoom out a little bit, this is main lake as main lake can be. This is the main, the main run of the river right here. And if we were to zoom in on this bank right here, 
It's just a, a little secondary hidden point, yet it's got a couple really key features that a fish will spawn on. It's got a sunken boat ramp right there, and it's got some isolated rock right down through that thing. And those big small mouth, those big large mouth, they will spawn. So let me show you what it looks like when we cover water up on it. That's water super high. There, the water's normal level. You can't see that stuff at all. Super muddy picture. <laughs> you know, you just can't see it. So that stuff's just right out there in the perfect spawning depth. You know, Texoma, those fish will spawn four, five, six feet of water. But if you didn't know that was there, you know, you can find it on Google Earth. You can find that little rounded point on your maps, you know, on your Lowrance. And uh, that's what I'm trying to show you. Those are the areas that fish spawn. It's one of the most overlooked places, in my opinion, for the general guy that's just out there a weekend fisherman. He doesn't think about catching those fish spawning on the main lake and uh, find those little rounded points, those little hard spots, those little rock piles. Try that the next time you guys are out there. Let me know what you do. You know, coming into April, these are gonna be some spots you wanna look all across the mid middle section of the country. Remember, the depth that you look dictates the water clarity. The cleaner, the clearer the water, the deeper it's gonna be. A 10 killer, a table rock, um, Smith Lake, Smith Mountain Lake, Hartwell, those types of places, that water's clear. It's gonna be out eight, 10, 15 feet possibly. Texoma is not going to be quite that clear. It's going to be more of like a, you know, four to seven, depending on where you're at on that lake. Uh, you know, then here at Falcon, you know, it's two to four. It's, it's shallow, shallow. Rayburn, it could be out to 10 feet of water on Rayburn. So the water color is going to dictate how deep you look. You know, I, I, I generally fish that Carolina rig, uh, maybe a swing jig, a stand-up worm, um, those are the things that I'm going to, you know, shaky head. Those are the things that are going to, is going to shine on those places to catch those fish. And generally speaking, it's a spot you can catch one of the all time biggest bass of your life because they're hidden little spots. They don't, those big fish, they stay close to that deep water. They don't swim all the way to the back of that pocket to spawn. They stay out more main lake oriented than any other fish. And those are the places you can find them. Hope this helps you guys. I hope you're enjoying Project D. We'll see you next week.